Hey YouTube, Ethan here. Today we're going to discuss deep freezing your food in oxygen not included. Deep freezing your food means bringing it down to a temperature below minus 18 degrees Celsius, where the game tells you that the shelf life of this food will be greatly prolonged when you reach this temperature level. This essentially means that every cycle, your freshness level will change 0% due to its frozen state and being in a sterile atmosphere. If you've ever seen someone's colony who's been playing the game for hundreds of cycles and their calorie count is in the millions or above, this is because they've likely deep frozen all of their food that they've created. When you deep freeze your food, it means that throughout your colony's life cycle, you won't get the dreaded food has decayed message continuously popping up in the upper left hand corner. Of course, this increases your colony's efficiency because you won't be letting food go to waste that you've spent precious resources growing, harvesting, and then cooking. Alternatively, it'll stay in deep frozen storage where it will essentially never decay unless your system breaks down and somehow your food thaws out, where in that case, you're going to have a big problem on your hands. In this video, we're going to explore how to deep freeze your food, where to store your deep frozen food that makes it easily accessible for your duplicates, and some of the different methods that you can use to deep freeze the food in the first place. As usual, I'm on my sandbox asteroid here in Oxygen Not Included, and this is the asteroid that I mainly use for my other tutorials on my channel. So with that, let's get into the video. So first of all, why would you use deep freezing over a refrigerator? Well, refrigerators don't deep freeze your food. You can see that on the refrigerator status screen, the stored temperature of the food is 1 degree Celsius. In this refrigerator, I'm storing a pinch of pepper nuts at 1 degree Celsius, and the freshness level will constantly decrease because it's not being deep frozen. It's only delaying the inevitable of the freshness level continuously going down. In the opposite refrigerator, I'm storing bristleberry and gristle berries, which are used to create the stuffed berries that I'm feeding to my colony. Neither of these refrigerators are storing the stuffed berry. However, arguably, I could be deep freezing the ingredients that are needed to make the stuffed berry if I want to decrease the food spoilage throughout my entire playthrough. I didn't find it necessary for this tutorial. However, it's something worth considering if your ingredients that you're using to make your final food product are spoiling before you get to use them. As I said, I decided to stick with refrigerators for this demonstration. What I really want to focus on is how to deep freeze the food that you're feeding to your duplicates. In my case, that's stuffed berry. And as you can see, its freshness level is 97%, and the game is also telling me that it's in a sterile environment and it's deep frozen. I have over 250,000 calories of the stuffed berry, and it is at minus 21 degrees Celsius and constantly fluctuating. If we take a look at the status screen, it does say that at minus 18 degrees Celsius below zero, it will greatly prolong the shelf life of this food, which essentially means that it's deep frozen. It's also in a sterile environment. In my case, I'm using chlorine gas, which is also at minus 20 degrees Celsius, which will allow this food to stay sterile and not have any germs on it that would cause food poisoning or other effects to my duplicates. The food is stored in a small deep freeze chamber surrounded by insulated ceramic tiles. The insulated ceramic tiles keep the deep frozen temperature constant. However, you will have a tiny bit of heating because of the liquid lock. I'm not using a vacuum separation here as I do between other liquid locks where my duplicates frequently pass through. And that is because if I was to implement the vacuum seal to keep the temperature from constantly rising in this deep frozen area, my duplicates would eventually exhale carbon dioxide and the heat transfer would begin anyways. So I'd constantly have to have the room vacuumed out. Therefore, I'm perfectly satisfied with the current setup and having a small amount of ethanol gas creating a liquid lock in order to keep the temperature change in here minimal. I'm using ethanol for a number of reasons. First of all, if I were to use water, it would freeze, turn into ice, and it would break the liquid lock. The freezing point for ethanol is minus 114 degrees Celsius, which I don't ever expect to reach in this playthrough if this was a real playthrough. So I would never have to worry about the ethanol freezing and breaking the liquid lock. Its evaporation point is also 78 degrees Celsius, which I never expect to reach either in this playthrough. You also may be wondering why I'm not using a full liquid lock that is two tiles high, and that is because my duplicates would eventually be able to pass through this liquid lock and get the sloppy wet debuff. In this case, they're still able to access the food without any problems, and they don't get a debuff from going through the liquid lock when they grab the food. Also, keeping the duplicates out of this deep frozen area 100% of the time ensures that they don't exhale carbon dioxide and ruin the atmosphere inside this area. The deep freeze block is located right next to my great hall. In my opinion, it is most practical to store the deep frozen food right next to your great hall so your duplicates can grab the food and eat it directly from the deep frozen area and then take a seat at one of their mess tables, just as Quinn did. Of course, getting the food here is also very easy. I'm simply using a conveyor rail that is attached to a conveyor loader right inside of my kitchen. The auto sweepers will pick up the food that is created by my duplicates, place it into the conveyor loader, which then goes to a chute inside my deep freeze area. In order to keep the decor high, I place the statue right next to the area where the duplicates grab the food while they are grabbing the food from the deep freeze area. This is not completely necessary and you could just have the pneumatic door in the place of this statue instead, but I thought it looked cool this way. The easiest way to get the chlorine gas in here is to build the gas vent after you've built your liquid lock 
and then simply destroy it once you no longer need it. Always remember that you can destroy the one block that is adjacent to your chute or your gas vent, so it allows your duplicants to gain access to where the gas vent would be in order to destroy it. And then they can simply take away the material from the liquid lock portion. Destroying the adjacent diagonal block from where your gas vent would be allows the atmosphere to remain intact inside this area. Then once that's done, you can put back the insulated tile just for cosmetic effects. But in reality, this insulated tile is not really doing anything in terms of keeping the atmosphere stable. So let's talk about how we're getting this deep frozen storage area to minus 20 degrees Celsius. First of all, I chose minus 20 degrees Celsius, even though the deep freeze starts at minus 18, in case I have slight temperature variations and I'm not able to maintain the 18 degrees exactly. 20 degrees gives me slightly more leeway in ensuring that the food never goes bad or starts to spoil. In my case, I'm using hydrogen and radiant gas pipes to keep this deep storage area very cold. That cooling is being performed by the anti-entropy thermal nodal fire, or more commonly referred to as the AETN. For this video, I'm going to refer to it only as the nullifier. I showcased the use of the nullifier when I did my video on industrial bricks, so go ahead and check that out if you've never used the nullifier before. But essentially, the usage is very easy. You're going to need a source of hydrogen piped into the nullifier, and that's it. Then it will start cooling its surrounding areas almost indefinitely until it gets to its maximum cooling point, which is minus 173 degrees Celsius. Before we discuss the nullifier in depth, I want to point out that you can use other methods, such as an aqua tuner steam turbine setup, in order to cool your food down all the way to minus 20 degrees. Obviously, you would need to use the proper liquid, such as ethanol, because most liquids at minus 20 degrees Celsius and beyond will start to freeze and break your pipes. I decided to use the nullifier because I have it available to me fairly close to where my deep freeze area is, and it's basically costing me no power whatsoever beyond the gas valves that I'm using and the gas pump that I'm getting the hydrogen gas from. It's a very cheap method compared to something like the aqua tuner. Using the nullifier is incredibly easy. All you do is essentially route your hydrogen gas into the inlet of the nullifier, where it will then begin to cool the surrounding area. In my case, I've also let in some hydrogen gas to help exchange some of the heat from the nullifier into the surrounding area where I'm snaking my pipes through. Although this snaking looks incomplete, it is already overkill for what it is, and the reason I didn't fill it out is just to show that you don't need all the space in order to cool your deep freeze storage area effectively. Essentially, all the gas is being cooled by the top three rows of piping. The hydrogen gas comes in at around 50 degrees Celsius that is controlled by a gas shutoff, and we'll explain that in a bit. As soon as the gas enters the nullifier chamber, it starts to cool down rapidly. Before it even gets past the first vent, we're already at minus 60 degrees Celsius, and it keeps dropping as it goes farther. As I showcased in the previous video, this gas also cools down the bottom of my industrial brick where my polluted water accumulates from various sources. Then it snakes into my hydrogen generators where it is then used up. The remaining heated gas continues the circle until it's used up by the nullifier. Just before the gas leaves and enters the industrial brick, I tap off using a gas bridge, which I then keep cooling even farther. Then I'm using ceramic insulated pipe to feed all the way into my food storage area. The ceramic material is essential. As you can see, there's a very minimal heat gain to the hydrogen while it's in the ceramic pipe. It's at 85 degrees Celsius, and the gas is very slowly warming up as it's passing through this pipe. Just to showcase how dramatic the heat increase can be when I'm not using ceramic pipe, I build parts of it out of sandstone, igneous rock, granite, sedimentary rock, and obsidian. You can see that just in this short stretch of pipe, where the gas starts out at minus 83 degrees Celsius, to the end of the obsidian, it's already at minus 72 degrees, and even minus 69 degrees. So if you're going to use a deep freeze method using hydrogen gas, where your nuddle fire is very far away from your frozen food storage, you definitely want to use ceramic, as you can see just how fast the temperature increases when I'm using something like sandstone, as opposed to using something like ceramic. By the time the hydrogen gas reaches the food storage area, it has already warmed up to minus 28 degrees Celsius. However, lucky for us, this is still well past the point where the food becomes the deep frozen state. Once it enters the deep frozen chamber, I'm using radiant pipe made out of steel, which is going to interact with the conveyor chute, the stuffed berry, and the steel metal tile which the stuffed berry sits on. I also have the chlorine gas in here as mentioned earlier, which helps transfer some of that heat away from the stuffed berry into the radiant pipes. For automation, I'm using a thermal sensor. Once this thermal sensor detects that the temperature has reached minus 20 degrees Celsius or higher, it will send the green signal to this gas shutoff. Once this gas shutoff turns on, it will allow the hydrogen gas to pass through until it is replaced by much cooler hydrogen gas where the cooling process can continue. You can see that the hydrogen gas inside the radiant gas pipe does warm up fairly quickly, so it is very important to have the thermal sensor there. From there, the hydrogen that is warmed up 
heads back into a gas reservoir that is in the same chamber as my nullifier. This reservoir acts as a buffer just in case the piping gets backed up and I'm not able to send the warmed up hydrogen away from the deep frozen area. For this setup, I never foresee that happening, but depending on how you have your setup in your base, a buffer may be necessary in order to prevent that backup from happening, otherwise you cannot continuously replenish cold hydrogen with the hydrogen that has already been warmed up in your deep frozen area. I also have an automation wire attached to the gas reservoir. When my gas reservoir reaches 100% state, it will send a red signal which will shut off the gas shutoff that is allowing the hydrogen to come into this chamber in the first place from the hydrogen vent. This is a worst case scenario where if I have a complete backup, I'd rather get rid of the hydrogen that has already warmed up and replenish the deep freeze area with extremely cold hydrogen to keep my food from spoiling. As I said, this may be an unnecessary step depending on how you're using your hydrogen in your base. In this colony, I have three hydrogen generators that are using the hydrogen as well, so I'm not worried about it ever being backed up. This gas reservoir will also help the hydrogen gas cool down if it ever has to accumulate in here. And of course, I'm using radiant pipe to send it back into the nullifier after it's already been cooled. By the time the hydrogen gas reaches the intersection from my hydrogen vent to my gas reservoir, it has already cooled down to acceptable levels to be rerouted back into my deep frozen storage area, which is why this intersection is before the gas bridge that taps off to go to the deep frozen chamber. Essentially, it's an overly complicated loop in order to make sure that I do everything possible to keep this area at minus 20 degrees below zero as often as possible. If you don't have access to a hydrogen vent or it's not producing enough hydrogen for your needs, you can always use the excessive amounts of hydrogen from a spawn. Check out my spawn video if you need to know how to build one. One thing to note is that the hydrogen gas that leaves the deep frozen chamber leaves at around minus 18 degrees Celsius. This is certainly not a trivial number, and you can use this in other areas of your base in order to help keep it cool. For example, if you're struggling with cooling, don't just reroute the insulated gas pipe directly back into your nullifier chamber. You could route it into your kitchen if you're not using a liquid cooled method for your kitchen like I am here. There are different ways you can achieve the deep freeze state for your foods. It doesn't necessarily have to be hydrogen gas using a nullifier. The reason why I showcased it is because there are usually very little uses for the nullifier that are extremely effective at benefiting the colony as much as deep freezing your food is. So it is definitely something worth considering if you have a nullifier spawned close enough to where your colony is usually grabbing the food from when they go on break. There is a distance limit based on how much ceramic you have available to you in order to build the gas piping necessary to keep the hydrogen gas from becoming too warm by the time it gets to your deep frozen storage area. But this is not always the case because like I said, you'll be limited by your ceramic production, which you may want to use elsewhere, and also where you obtain your hydrogen from. Regardless of what method that you choose, keep in mind that the food itself does not have to be minus 20 degrees Celsius. I have over 250,000 calories worth of stuffed berry and it's sitting at around minus 5 degrees Celsius. Yet it is still in its deep frozen state. This is because it's only the atmosphere that needs to be minus 18 degrees Celsius or lower in order for the food to be a deep frozen state. As soon as the food arrives at the conveyor belt, it doesn't matter what temperature the food is as long as the atmosphere is below minus 18 degrees. Keep in mind that if you're using a conveyor belt, the food may also not be 100% fresh because as it is moving along the conveyor belt, it's going to lose freshness. So it's also worth keeping this deep frozen area very close to your kitchen, which also should be very close to your great hall. Everything should be within reasonable proximity to one another in order to achieve this effect. I hope that you were able to find this video informative and helpful. If you were able to learn something or if you have any questions, please feel free to leave it in the comments below. And don't forget to leave a rating on this video as this helps me a lot in the algorithm. It helps push the content so more people can find it when they're searching oxygen not included videos on YouTube and they're able to learn the same information that you were able to from this video. Alternatively, if you've already known how to deep freeze food and you would like to leave some tips, feel free to leave them below as well. Thank you to everyone who subscribes to me on this channel for your support. It means a ton to me and your support keeps me motivated to continue making content. Until next time, I'm Ethan and I'll see you in the next one.